I'm working at University Côte d'Azur. Uh, I'm also part of uh, Arafing's company, and I'm collaborating with Lacuna, especially on the design of circular polarized uh, antenna. Um, so here is the outline of my presentation. So I'm not sure that everything has a good physical background, so I will make a summary of what is a circular polarization. Uh, then I will explain why we need CP for uh, space communication. I will then explain the design of uh, this antenna that you can see uh, on the Lacuna booth. Um, then I will show that uh, CP is also interesting for uh, terrestrial communication, and I will show some, some results. And I will finish with some future developments. Um, so first, circular polarization. Uh, so you mainly know that uh, electromagnetic waves are composed by electric and magnetic uh, fields that are oscillating. Um, so in a plane wave, uh, think that electric and magnetic fields are orthogonal, like you see in this uh, animation. So this is a plane wave. And in fact, when you have an antenna, uh, locally, oh, locally close to the antenna, you are uh, uh, exciting the electric and magnetic field. So if you look close to the antenna, you have something a little bit random. But when you look uh, in a little bit more far from the antenna, uh, a wave uh, appears and is propagating like a plane wave that you have, uh, you have here. Okay? Uh, but for sake of simplicity, when we look at uh, electromagnetic wave, we mainly focus on the electric uh, part. Okay? So this is why on the next uh, animation, uh, magnetic disappear, you have just the electric uh, signal, uh, the electric uh, field. Uh, so first, I'm using uh, this uh, on this website. On this website, you can easily uh, construct any type of uh, polarization. So if you have some um, uh, question or if you want to show to some students or some people uh, how uh, EM wave are working, uh, really go to this website. It's very, very good. Uh, so uh, a linear polarization. Uh, it's this one, so electric uh, uh, field is oscillating at the carrier frequency. So if I'm working at 868, this will be the frequency of oscillation. If you're looking at uh, uh, circular polarization, what you see is that you have no more an oscillation of the amplitude. The amplitude remains constant, but the field is rotating. Okay? So, uh, and of course, the sense of rotation uh, in the propagation direction of the, of the antenna give, will tell you if it's a right or left-handed uh, antenna, so if, depending on the sense of rotation. Uh, so what is important to understand from this slide also is that uh, if you look at the, the pore you have inside, um, inside these two uh, wave, um, in fact, you will see that in fact you have more power in the CP for the same peak amplitude, because the, 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 the electric field is constant. Okay? So in fact, you, have, uh, you double the power for the same peak, peak amplitude. And it will be important for the next part. So how can you uh, create a uh, circular polarization? Most of the time, uh, a circular polarization is created from linear. Okay? So you are superposing uh, multiple linear polarization. So the classical uh, solution is to use two linear polarizations, so two orthogonal uh, electric uh, fields. Uh, so if I'm having the two um, uh, orthogonal electric fields with the same phase, I'm going to have a diagonal polarization. Okay? This is what you see here. But if I'm using a phase shift of 90 degrees between the two uh, electric fields, then I will create a beautiful circular uh, polarization. So, what is also important to understand is how much power you can uh, radiate. So, it's a question of regulation. You certainly know that in Europe, uh, the regulators uh, tell you that you have not to go uh, above an uh, equivalent radiated power of 14 dBm. So, what is an uh, effective radiated power? It's a uh, equivalent to the amount of power you apply to uh, a dipole, classical half-wave dipole, uh, to give the same power density in a given point. Okay? But think that a dipole is a linear uh, polarized antenna. Okay? So in fact, if you uh, follow this, uh, these rules, if you are using a, a circular polarization, you are splitting your power in vertical and horizontal. Okay? So, um, so, um, and it's a very well-known uh, uh, solution in RFID. So if I'm using a linear polarized antenna, 
My limits, so I'm using a, a dipole antenna, and my limit is 14 dBm, okay? But if I'm using a circular polarized antenna, okay, uh, and with the same gain, then I can, I'm allowed to put at the input of my antenna 3 dB more, okay? So this is a huge benefit from, from, from the CP. Um, Okay, so now, uh, why do we need uh, circular polarization for space communication? Um, there is a lot of reason for that. Uh, so first, uh, there is a, a view of the Lacuna satellite. Huh? So you see that from the Lacuna satellite, they already select the circular polarization. So here you have the deployable antenna that will generate the circular uh, polarized, uh, circular polarized uh, wave. So why do they select circular? It's mainly because first, uh, when you are crossing the different uh, uh, layer in the atmosphere, you have something that is called the Faraday effect. So it's interaction between light and, and magnetic field. And it will affect linear polarization, but it's not going to affect circular polarization. And it's very severe when it's, you are looking at UHF frequency. So first, the first advantage. Then uh, you have also a, a, a big advantage, which is uh, the reliability for the link. Because uh, when you have CP, uh, if you are using two linear antenna, okay, if you rotate, you are going to lose your link, okay? Because you have a polarized mismatch. If you have two linear, uh, two polarized, uh, circularly uh, polarized antenna, whatever the rotation, you will keep the same level, okay? And of course, when the satellite is coming, you don't know from the terrestrial point of view how oriented is, is your device, okay? So you have no risk of misalignment. And also, uh, a, a third advantage is, uh, of course, you will have, we, from the space, you will see a lot of noise coming from the, the, the ground. And this, so this is interferer. And this uh, interference coming from ground are mainly generated by linear polarized antenna because everybody is using the, the, the LP. And then, with the CP, you are gaining 3 dB of noise level. Okay, so a lot of reason to use uh, a circular polarized uh, solution for, for, for space communication. So you have to think that if you want to do communication with space, especially with the Lacuna solution, you are using exactly the same frequencies, you are using exactly the same hardware for the chip uh, and uh, uh, MCU and so on, only difference, you have to change a little bit the software, and you have to change the antenna, of course, okay? Um, so what is the antenna you need for, for a ground terminal? Typically, of course, we are focusing on low-cost antenna. Uh, it must be also robust, easy to assemble. Uh, and, um, of course, we need to have a right hand, because uh, uh, Lacuna select the, the right uh, uh, sense of uh, rotation for the antenna. Um, and uh, and also, it's important to have a wide beam width, because if you have a wide beam width, it means that your antenna will be able also to communicate at low elevation. Uh, and you should be able to tune the antenna at 868 or 915, uh, depending on the, the country you are working with. And ideally, we would like to have a large, beam, a large bandwidth to, to use the two, the, the two frequencies. And when we, we, I was looking to, to, to build this type of antenna, um, uh, I find a lot of inspiration from what you can find in RFID, as I say, RFID is using uh, the circular polarization, and also what you can find in GPS antenna. So, about the design of the, the Lacuna uh, antenna. Um, so, how can you uh, make a miniature uh, circular polarized antenna? You have different solutions. Uh, first one, you can use uh, some patch antenna, so you know that patch, in fact, the size of the patch is a, a half wavelength. So if you want to make a miniature antenna, you have to use uh, some high permittivity ceramic. Uh, so for example, you can find this antenna from Tau Glass. It's available. Uh, the only issue with uh, ceramic is that first it's expensive, uh, and it's also quite uh, heavy. But it's robust. It's working. Um, then you, you see that to generate a CP, you, ca you have to use, uh, for example, two linear polarization. So you can try to use two cross dipole uh, to make this, but uh, it's not easy to, to feed and especially to put electronics uh, behind. Um, and especially you need a, a balloon. So it's, it's not so easy to, to, to make this type of antenna working. And when we are looking also in the literature, we find a lot of quadri quadrifilar solution. So quadrifilar, you have uh, basically um, 
Oh, so you have f four antennas, okay? And to, to make the circular polarization, you have to have uh, a feeding circuit that put different phase shift between the, the, the four elements of the antenna. So the question uh, at this point, and, and then making the feeding circuit is quite complex, okay? So uh, our question was, can we find a tree filer solution? Uh, so using just three antennas to make the circular polarization. Uh, and then this is the, the solution we, we, we find. So uh, here you can see that we have typically three antennas. So uh, uh, one, two, three, okay? And to create, so there are miniature antenna, okay? Because it's a, in fact, classical uh, inverted F antenna, quite small. Um, so you see the size is uh, uh, seven centimeter on a 12 millimeter of, of thickness. And to create, to generate the CP from that, you need to find a circuit to um, create a, a power split first, and then to have a phase shift of zero degree, 120, and 240 degree. Okay? So just to show you what is happening, this is a simulation of, the, of this antenna. So the, on, on the left part, you can see here, this is the field when you are very close to the antenna. So imagine I'm monitoring the electric field when I am very close, okay? So you can see that you have the free antenna radiating uh, with uh, time difference, and they are radiating a linear polarization. You see, the, the field is moving on one side and on the other side, okay? But if I, I just change my reference plane by five centimeter, okay? I'm going just five centimeter above my antenna, then I have a beautiful, uh, uh, a beautiful vector which is rotating, okay? This is because the, the three linear antenna are combined in uh, a circular uh, polarization. So then you, um, you, you understand that you have to, f to find a way to make a circuit to generate this uh, uh, phase shift and power split. So, uh, the principle of the structure is based on, on, on this solution, so I will not enter in, the, in all the technical detail, but basically we are using a 3db quadrature uh, hybrid coupler that is generating uh, a zero uh, and a 90 degree phase difference. And uh, so when you have a wave uh, that is uh, fed by the, 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 the input, the phase is, uh, the, the power is divided into equal amplitude uh, signal uh, with quadrature uh, phase shift between the two. A part, I, I'm adding here some, some loads, okay, to reflect just a part of the signal. So a part is transmitted, a part is reflected, and magic of hybrid coupler tell you that if you, you make a reflection with the two exact phase, you will in fact recombine the reflected phase on the isolated port of your hybrid coupler. So by doing so, I can generate the free uh, output with and I'm just adding some very small uh, delay line, okay? And I can generate the uh, free uh, output with the right phase shift. So we go for layout. So you see this is uh, the, the layout uh, of, of, this, uh, of this circuit. So it can be very compact. It's just done on FR4, so very low cost material. And, uh, and in fact, we have quite low loss because normally FR4 material is a low C substrate, not, not so good for antennas. But as the circuit is very small, then we have a very, very uh, small losses uh, in this antenna. Um, so, of course, we go for some prototyping to check that uh, uh, this antenna could work. So, of course, you see that uh, soldering is not perfect. And, uh, but, I mean, it was a way to, to, to check that, uh, that it was working. Uh, so, we do, we, first, we, we, we check that measurement agree with simulation. So, this is reflection coefficient. Uh, so, this is uh, the, um, when you send the power to the antenna, you are monitoring the power which is reflected, and, and you want to have a low, uh, a low reflection. So, we get quite good agreement. And then we also measure uh, in an equate chamber the, the radiation parameters. Uh, and you can see that with this antenna, you can have uh, again, close to 3 dB IC. Um, but something that you have to notice, which is very important, is that the, beam, the, beam, uh, the frequency uh, band is quite limited. You see, we have, let's say, a good performance over a 20 MHz band, okay? So 
think that uh, it would be important uh, if you want to use this antenna uh, and you will integrate in your, in your application, probably you, you will need some tuning to have the best performance at the frequency you, you want. Um, Okay, and of course, the next step was to, because, I mean, you can measure an electric chamber, but when you want to check that it's working, the best way is to go to experimental validation. Uh, so I send my antenna to Lacuna, and uh, they, they taste it, and especially we, we did a comparison uh, with the existing antenna that they were using, okay? Uh, so, um, in fact, the main advantage of my antenna is mainly the cost, in fact, because uh, this antenna is using um, expensive uh, RF substrate, uh, and my antenna, I'm using just the classical FF4, so it can be very, very uh, uh, low cost. Uh, so you see the experiment was uh, in October, so not so long ago. Uh, and uh, uh, so in blue, you have uh, the new antenna, and in red, you have the reference antenna that were used. So you can see that basically we have similar results, okay? And uh, yeah, so it's communication versus elevation. So also you can notice that uh, with the Lacuna system, you, can, you, can, you are able to communicate with this, type, with this type of antenna up to very low elevation of uh, uh, 40 degrees, okay? Uh, so, of course, then the next step when we validate this was to, to, to go to production. Uh, so, uh, we, 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 uh, we are working with array things. Um, so, we make a custom design, so you see that, uh, in fact, the only difference between the prototype and the, 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 the final uh, solution is that we add uh, uh, colors, uh, silk, and so on to, to, to make a customization. Uh, we had also some possibility to make additional tuning, so we are using zero ohm resistor, so you can easily tune your, your antenna uh, when you integrate. And of course, we validate also that uh, we get the similar result uh, with, the, um, um, with the previous prototype. Um, okay, and just to show you, this is the beam width, so the, you see versus theta, so versus, um, uh, so theta zero is like this, and then you are looking at uh, the gain when you, you, you move like this, and you can see that uh, up to 45 degrees, you still have a zero dBIC gain, so we, it's, it's a very, very wide beam width antenna, okay? This is perfect for this type of application. Okay, so then I'm going to introduce you uh, another antenna that I, I was also working on. So this antenna uh, was uh, uh, designed just after a, a fruitful uh, discussion with Peter Ebelings at uh, HESA. So in fact, this is a similar, uh, so you have some samples here. This is a similar concept. You still have the three philo, okay? So you still have uh, three antennas. Uh, you see here, but you see the circuit is a little bit different, okay? So this circuit is a sort of uh, one, 120 degree uh, hybrid coupler. So you see that you have two ports uh, with this circuit. If you are using the first port, okay, you will generate a phase shift of zero degree, 120 and 240 degree, okay? If you are using the second port, you will generate uh, the phase shift in the opposite direction, okay? So it's quite funny because uh, um, then with, with, with this uh, antenna, what you can do is that if you are using the first port, you will radiate a, a right-handed in one direction. If you are using the second port, you will radiate uh, in the other direction. So I'm not sure there is a huge uh, application for Lacuna, we can discuss, but, <laughs> but for the beauty of science, uh, I make this antenna. Um, and we go for, for, the, for the prototyping. So I also really like, you know, the, the, the design and so on, but I mean, it's not, uh, I mean, it's what the, the design, the, the coupler is looking like. So, uh, and I test it with the Lacuna system, and basically it works also. So, um, okay, so then I have just uh, some few, few, few minutes to talk about something uh, complementary. Uh, so, um, we also study if this antenna can also be used for terrestrial communications. Um, and, and, and basically, uh, you have to understand that when you are doing a, a communication on Earth, um, most of the time you are not going to have just a line of sight communication, okay? You are going to experience uh, a lot of multipath 
between the transmitter and the receiver. So uh, a lot of uh, possible uh, path. And uh, what you have to understand is that most of the time in your gateway, you are using this type of uh, uh, dipole antenna, okay? linear polarized antenna. So of course, um, there is a, 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 a small comparison between the GSM and the LoRa. Maybe you have already seen this type of figure of merit. Uh, so it's easy to compare the two because they are using the same frequency. They have mostly the same, uh, the same bandwidth. Uh, of course, the takes power is very different. Okay, GSM, you can go to, to 2 watts, uh, 33 dBm. Uh, but the sensitivity is also very different. Okay? So if you look at especially the budget link, uh, the GSM is clearly losing against LoRa, okay? And so if you look at uh, the device, uh, the, the node, it's, 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 here it's a phone, in fact, they have, the antenna have very similar gain, okay? So if you look at uh, the, the node and uh, the technology, LoRa is winning, okay? But if you have done some experiments, you have maybe noticed that, in fact, the GSM sometimes is always better, okay? <laughs> And it can be a little bit weird, because if you look at this, you should have a, a huge margin, OK? But it's not the case. So why? The main difference is this, the gateway, OK? Operators are using better uh, solution. They are investing more. <laughs> so maybe Semtex should do uh, some updates <laughs> on this side. Um, so when you, you compare uh, a LoRa base station and a JSM base station, um, so, LoRa base station is just a single dipole, omnidirectional, okay? Linear polarization. If you open a GSM base station, you will see this type of very complex uh, structure because, in fact, first, the antenna are sectorial, so you have some gain, so you have normally a 120 de degree uh, beam width, so you have some gain thanks to that. And also, the GSM base station are using plus and minus 45 degree uh, sensors, I mean antennas, so they can receive both polarization. And why they are doing so? Because it's, 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 it's really better. Um, okay, so to, to give you some, so I think it's very important to understand how polarization is impacting your, your result. So to do so, uh, we have done a, a, a protocol to make some measurements that can be, uh, that are reproducible, okay? So uh, this has been done with my student Lionel. So if you have some question on the protocol, uh, please uh, uh, come to ask uh, some question to him. He will be happy to answer. So this has been done in, uh, in my uh, university, so in Nice. And uh, uh, you have the gateway, which is here, okay? And uh, we define a tool, okay, all around the, the university. And Lionel is, is doing the measurement with different type of antenna. And then we can compare the performance of uh, all different positions of antenna or different type of antenna, okay? Uh, and thus, uh, the result we plot it with a cumulative distributive function, okay? So it's a statistical way to, to, to provide the results. And especially, you are providing so the statistical distribution versus the RSSI we receive, okay? And here you can see it's two measurements with the same antenna, so we, then we can say that it's very reproducible. We have the same, same type of result, okay? So we have been studying uh, for two different uh, scenarios. So the first scenario is outdoor propagation. And, um, and so we, we look at uh, using a, a linear a polarized antenna uh, placed in vertical position, or place in horizontal position, and then we compare also with the circular polarization, okay? So first, you can notice that the, using horizontal or vertical, you have a huge impact on the communication. So certainly you, not, you already notice it when you do experiment, but then when you are doing your implementation, think that if you are using a vertical uh, antenna gateway, you should also place your antenna in a vertical position. I mean, the, the, the node, you should always focus on that. Because uh, the, 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 um, we get a lot of packets that, we, in fact, we do not receive. And then if you look at the, the CP, the CP is a little bit behind the, the, um, the vertical, of course, because you are splitting between the two, uh, horizontal and vertical, but it's not so far. And think also that here we do it with the constant uh, output power, but with CP, in fact, you are allowed to radiate 3dB more, so if you radiate 3dB more, you will be at the same level, in fact. And then another result, just to show you also that the channel is very important. Uh, here it's a result of 
indoor propagation. So indoor, it's typically, uh, we, we, do it the we do the same uh, protocol, but inside the building. And what you see is that when you are inside the building, polarization do, do, do not matter anymore. Okay? Why? Because you have so much multipath that, in fact, whatever the orientation of your antenna, you will receive the same. The same. So uh, in, 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 in channel model, we call it a Rayleigh uh, channel because you have uh, almost the same probability of uh, uh, arrival from the, all the different directions. And then, if you look at this typical application, the circular polarization is clearly better because uh, first, it's very similar, but you are allowed to radiate 3 dB more, so you will have a better signal-to-noise signal ratio. Um, so, okay, so it's now time to conclude. Um, so, just some future developments. So, this antenna uh, will be available uh, on Everything's website uh, end of February, if you are interested to, to, to do some tests. Uh, we're also developing uh, uh, with Lacuna a kit integrating both the antenna and the electronics. Um, and also waterproof casing, of course, for outdoor application. And it will be available normally for mid-2020. Uh, um, we're also working on developing a uh, um, uh, circular uh, polarized omnidirectional antenna. Okay? So then, if you are using the classical linear polarized antenna, but you can just replace by the CP and radiate 3dB more. And uh, this uh, space invader antenna, uh, we'll be pushed to open source, so I just need to make the publication, and after all, uh, especially uh, my student Lionel is going to make an integration of electronics and, uh, and, and the antenna, and uh, it will be available for open source uh, for makers who want to, to, to play with uh, satellite. So, thanks a lot for your attention, and I'm happy to answer to your questions. Yeah, merci beaucoup, Fabien. Merci beaucoup. Uh, a lot of innovations from your side. Uh, respect for that, I would say. Are there any questions or remarks? I see a lot of pictures being made, which is always a good sign. Please. Here you go. <laughs> oh. Hi. Hello. Um, if uh, the CP antenna is so much better, why isn't it used in all of the... IoT, RF stuff. Because yet? people are stupid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because um, honestly, I mean, you see, first, um, it's harder to make CP antenna. Also, uh, you have to notice that uh, for a CP antenna, you need three linear antenna. So, in fact, it's three times bigger. Okay? Yeah. So, of course, it's a trade off also between performance and size. Okay? Uh, but I think that, you know, I, I get a lot of effort, in fact, to make it work. <laughs> so, I, I think it's, it's even harder to make a CP antenna. But and I really think it's a benefit for IoT. Yeah. Right. And if you would do that with a patch antenna, they would just be huge on 868 megahertz. On the patch, yeah. If you use a patch uh, with a classical substrate, it will be uh, 17 by 17 right. centimeters. Yeah. So, I mean, so this is why you can use it with ceramic yeah. because it helps to, to you have higher permittivity, you can compact the antenna. Thanks. Welcome. Space for one more question, yes. One question that I did not pick up from your drawings. Your circular antenna in the graphs that you show us, was that on the moat or on the base station, on the gateway? Where, uh, no, did, where did you install it? Okay, so... Um, so or, fact, or, or was it static or moving? Ah, uh, you mean for the tertiary uh, test? In your, in your test on the, uh, on the graph that you just showed? This one, yeah. The distribution graph? Okay, so here... <coughs> okay, um, good question, maybe I, I do not... Uh, uh, so here, we were using a, a classical linear polarized dipole, and uh, we, we were moving a node, different type of node. So some are linear, some are circular. Okay, and we are moving all around this. So here you have some um, trees, uh, hills, and so on. So it was really uh, something um, typical of IoT application. Okay, so you were moving the circular antenna. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So in fact, uh, we we place the circular antenna like that. Which is not optimal, because in fact, certainly, because um, here on, on the horizon, you have mainly uh, horizontal polarization. You, you have a bit of uh, vertical, but it's not optimal. Clearly, this, this antenna can be very good if you have, for example, you put it on a wall, okay? Because you will radiate a very uh, wide beam width, and also the two polarization, so whatever the, uh, you are exciting the channel in a very efficient way, in fact. 
Yeah. We are going to, to do more experiment to exactly understand. Uh, how okay, we can Fabian. Go. So yeah, end sorry. of February, the, the antennas are for sale. Do you already have pre-sale today or not? Uh, we, I don't think they are pre-sale, but I think okay. uh, don't worry, there will be enough samples for everybody. Very good, very good. Can we say look under your chairs? Or what do you not? mean? Can we say look under your chair right now? <laughs> like as if they are under there? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> okay, no, Gosh. little joke. Thank you so much Thanks once again, Thanks. Fabien Ferreiro.